or I'll, I'll get very specific. This is Fiji against England. It's an opening match. So I've turned the sound down just so that you can concentrate on me, or I can concentrate rather. Um, and then I will pause and explain things. So we've just seen a score there by England. And let's see how that happened. So England kick off. Fiji gather. Now notice how the players come from their own side. They don't want to go offside by going around the other side. So all the red will be from the right. That's called a maul. And England score. So here's a replay. Okay, here's a really good example of some of the drills that Ellie and I have been asking me to do. So you see England are trying to maintain a defensive line. And as Ellie's and um, sort of exercises were running around the corner. So the, the English players are running from the top left, trying to fill holes to the bottom right. Fiji have just been tackled, and you can see there the Fijian player has been tackled, and in one movement has placed the ball towards, so you can't hold on once you're tackled. It's count to two, then place the ball if you feel that there aren't any of your players around. If there are, then immediately place the ball. These two players are now going to and this player here are about to form a, a ruck, which means that they these two are going to protect the ball from these English players. And this player will either join the ruck or will pick up the ball. Okay. So this is the touch judge or um, assistant referee they're called these days. This is touch. This line here is touch. Don't ask me why it just is. If you touch the touch that maybe it's because if you touch the white line, then you're out. So this flag in the air from the assistant referee indicates that she has seen a player's foot touch ball. Doesn't matter if any other player on the field goes out of bounds or touches the line. If you're holding the ball and you touch the line, you're out. And, and if there's no other issues with um, penalizable actions, the team that wasn't holding the ball will get the put in at the throw, the restart, which is called a line out. This is a line out, different stage. This is something that the English men and women and South African teams are very good at. So what we had here, if I go back just a little bit. <coughs> so they, this is highlights, remember? So line out. These are the, you can, there's lots of rules around the line out, but don't worry. Typically it's your, um, your seven forwards are here, and this is your hooker who throws the ball in. The other hooker will be floating around there. You can see her number two there. Okay. There has to be a, a meter gap as the ball is thrown in. And if you look over here, the assistant referee, her flag is in the left hand, and her arm is pointing to the team who has the ball or the right to the ball. Okay. So the line out can be done in lots of different ways. Here, they're throwing towards the back of the line out so that some of the players furthest away. And these two support players will lift up this player here. Uh, it's annoying having that thing in the middle. Um, 
So what happened is the English players caught the ball, hit the ground. As soon as they've hit the ground, English players come around to give her support. And Fijian players, they know what's going to come. This is called a mall or a rolling mall. England are going to try and push the rolling mall this way. Fiji is going to try and stop them. Notice that the Fijian players cannot run around the side. You have to come from the back. So just imagine that there's just an, an imaginary white line perpendicular to this line that goes through the ball. Wherever the ball is, you're not allowed to come around further than that part. So this is a rolling mall. England have to get it going. If they don't, they have to use the ball or the other team gets it. So they're going forward, they're going forward. And you see there the referee was perfectly positioned. Spots that the ball has been grounded right there. So that is a try. The only way to stop that is for the other the defensive team to be stronger and to break up that mall. See how they're pushing, 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 and then come through. Fijians are renowned for their men and women for their ability to run the ball from all parts. They struggle on the set pieces, but they're magnificent in loose play. So what happened here? Fiji were attacking from left to right. They passed the ball inside. An English player grabbed it, was tackled, went to ground. As soon as they go to ground and one player, there's lots of rules, but basically if there's one player from each side fighting over the top of the player that's been tackled, that is called a ruck. The ball is on the ground. Again, imagine there's an imaginary white line. And that's what this uh, assistant ref is indicating here. She is pointing to where the ball is. So the Fijians are lined up at the back. They can't go further than the last feet in this case. Okay. The English players. So there's your number nine. Sometimes the number nine gets tackled, but the number nine is the scrum half. That is the person who's typically small, um, uh, but very fast, very quick thinking. And <coughs> they are the link between the big forwards and the fast backs now what's happened here is some of the england didn't need all of their forwards to get the ball back and as ellie is instructed you see this number one that's a prop she's not needed in there so what she's going to do is she's going to go around here and fill in in case she's needed to run this is a, a lady called sarah Byrne. she's a, also the other prop. she's number three and She's just a dynamic runner. She's amazing for a prop. Um, so they they will pass this out. They're in. They're closer to their own line, so they don't do anything silly. They don't throw long passes. They just want to consolidate. Ah, okay. Didn't pass it to her. Um, okay. So this is another line out slightly later in the match. And there you've got the assistant referee from the other side of the field. You've got the someone's gone into touch or a Fiji have kicked the ball into touch. And this is a very nicely set up um, shot. So England have got one, two, three, four, five, six forwards they so there are eight forwards remember that's a forward the hooker she's about to throw in so you've got six so what england have done if they've taken one of their forwards out this player here who's a flanker she's amazing um these two this is zoe harrison and helen <coughs> excuse me helena Rowland. um zoe harrison is the fly half she's like the general or the quarterback they are dropping back sort of somewhere around here uh, they have to be 10 meters away 
from the line out and the line out they can't come up until the line out is indicated as being over you see the referee here she's telling them to get back okay now Fiji are not 10 meters that's because that's their try line uh, and this is the five meter line here five meters so they can't go further than their try line because that would be a disadvantage so they have to stay there if the line out was over here the 10 meters away they would have to be on on the line still okay So you're allowed to lift the player. It has to be a smooth motion up, a smooth motion down. And there has to be a, a, a fair throw. So when the hooker, uh, cocaine in this case, um, throws it in, it has to go down the middle between the two teams. So this is a maul. So it looks a bit similar to a ruck, except for they're on their feet. And a maul is when the ball is off the ground and the player has not been grounded. And there's slightly different rules, but I, I won't get into too much detail. Again, you see the players, they're doing quite well here. Often players will try and creep up. Um, the forwards are trying, the Fijian forwards are trying to stop the English uh, Red Roses. And the ladies in red are going to be trying to push. And if they feel resistance, they'll try and swing the mall a little bit. This here, the referees, um, you, the, the referees use verbal as well as motions to indicate what's going on. The, her hands are up at the moment, telling the back lines that the line out is not yet completed because it hasn't moved. I think it's two meters or three meters. Um, these players actually, strictly speaking, shouldn't be here. Um, this player should still be on the white line because she's hands as if she drops her hands, the line out is over. There. Let's just go back a little bit. Um, So England have got the mall going, and right now you're thinking, well, the easiest thing is just to tackle the person. A mall, <coughs> excuse me, a mall cannot be taken down. You can't, you can't deliberately. The only way to stop a mall is to break it up by driving your forwards through the middle and breaking it up, or for the English team to do something wrong. And there are rules that they can do wrong, um, but you're not allowed to just take the legs out. And if you see, there'll be a player just about here who goes down. Whether she did it deliberately or not, it's a penalty. And you'll see the referee's arm go out to the right. See that player here? So it looks like she's just lost her footing. But the fact is, is that she is now going to trip and she's going to stop them all from moving forward illegally. And you'll see the referee indicate the arm goes for a penalty goes horizontal to the ground towards the team who's receiving the penalty who gets the advantage and then when she blows the whistle the arm goes up to indicate um, that it, the penalty's um, being given see so, yeah, a hand go out here so what england they got disrupted illegally so they got the advantage so the, what the the referee is doing right now is playing advantage. An advantage is um, there has been an illegal play, but the team that were um, sinned against still have the ball and still have the opportunity, and they'd rather keep playing to see if they can get a a try um, rather than a stoppage in play, which allows the defensive team to organise, and you might not get a try; you might only get three points. So when you ask how long is advantage it's entirely at the discretion of the of the referee um typically anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute so here 
you see the referee, they've got so much to look at. Um, so here, this player is offside. Okay, so this is now a ruck. And she should be at the behind the last feet of the ruck. So this person here probably on her side and her feet are somewhere sort of there. So this player, this player, this player, all offside. This player is down, but in an offside position. So if the ball came that way and an English player ran into her, that would be a penalty, even though she looks injured. The red team are all running from um, setting themselves. So one ran, got tackled, went down. These players came in to protect the ball. The ball is being pushed back. And these players are waiting to see if they're needed. If not, number five and this player are going to um, probably get past the ball and try to get over the line. There we go. So she's bound onto that one to support her. Only one player is allowed to do that at the moment. And they've gone over for the try. That is two minutes of English play, uh, yeah, personified. So the conversion for the kick by Emily Scarrett. She didn't have a best day with the with the boot, but that's an extra two points. So this is a scrum, a perfect angle of a scrum. A scrum is uh, the infield equivalent of a lineout. It's just a, a way of restarting the match. Uh, again, the forwards take uh, participate, and this is the scrum half, the number nine. In this case, it's Leanne Infante, who's a fabulous player. Um, what you'll see here in the line-out earlier, I said the ball had to be thrown in straight to give a fair... Um, for some reason, scrums, you're allowed to feed it practically back to your eight-man over here. I mean, I, I don't understand it. No one does. Um, so it's not a fair fair contest. Um, so the ball's going to go in. Now, this is why the number two, who's right in the middle of this, is called a hooker. Her job is to hook the ball back. She does, They don't normally need to do it these days because the ball goes straight to the second row. Uh, and that's all terminology that I'll explain. Now, if you have a look at where the English players are, here and here, and... The Fijian, they, they, that's the, looks like the scrummy, the opposite number nine. That player doesn't look like they're back as far as they should be, but anyway. Um, so England should get the ball from this. There we go. Plus, so that's the fly half. That is the inside center. That's the outside center, Emily Scarrett. So that's 12 and 13. Here is the winger has run from all the way over here, the left wing has run all the way over here to give additional options to the fly half. So the fly half now can kick, run herself. This looks like she's going to run an inside line. So what that does, that will hold these defenders because they won't know whether the, she's going to get the ball or she's going to get the ball. Um, and then here you've got your fullback who's joined the, the line, and you've got the right wing. So the left wing has received the ball, but been well anticipated by the Fijian defender, and she's been tackled. This is another ruck. Fiji can't come around. The invisible line again. England number seven. She's new. She's um, fighting with Marley Packer for the starting position, but she's an exceptional player as well. So that's the fly half. Has kicked the ball downfield. They weren't getting enough field position. And here's the Fijians doing what Fijians do. Just absolutely fabulous. Beautiful. Look at that pass. Absolutely beautiful. Here's a replay. 
straight through, terribly defending. There might have been a little bit of shepherding there, but um, that pass on the run, that is a very hard skill to do that well. Beautiful. So where the uh, the English have, have really benefited a number of ways, but their dedication is um, in kicking. So let me, as I was yammering there, uh, we missed a good thing. So there's another line out coming out. So the Fijians missed that. So here we've got a line out, but it was um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight there. But the flank has dropped out. The number seven has dropped out. And, and so the English players were all back 10 meters. Line out got one pass to the fly half and then now they're going to use the strength of the forward flanker who was in the line little pop pass which ellie had you guys practicing this week oh, a few gd oh look at that pickup that is sublime absolutely there's so much skill on display here let's just run through that one again Missed kick, little pop pass, run through, no support yet. Watch this pick up from a toes. Absolutely world class. That's Helen Rowland. And she runs around because the kick has to be kicked from perpendicular from where the ball is scored. So the closer you get it, without risk not getting the score. Watch this, pick up, oh, absolute skill. So she puts it down before she gets to the post because she might get tackled and lose the ball. Scarrot for the conversion. She got that one over. Another bit of highlight. So this is Fiji on the attack just before the. So if you look up here, it's, um, it is almost half time. So, um, excuse me, I'm just going to close the window. It's getting a bit chilly. Um, so it's 40 minutes a half, but the referee has the, um, um, control of the clock and can stop the clock. So they won't have played 40 minutes or they won't have been on the field for 40 minutes. They'd probably be on the field for 46 or 47 minutes. Um, so here, Fiji on the attack, England, well, the ball's here, so the ball's out, so they are allowed to advance. I think probably a couple of these players were skirting the offside law slightly. These players are all very, very onside. Nice pass. Ellie. Kill Dunn is the fullback for England, number 15. She's deceptively um, sort of slim, but she's tough as nails. So they recycle the ball and they moved it back to the left. England go back on side. Fiji swing it back out again. So here's, here's a good example of if you're the tackler, you can't disrupt the ball. So as I told you earlier, if you're the attacker, you've got the ball in your hand, you get tackled, you, you have to present it backwards towards your team if you can in one 
smooth movement. If you're the tackler, you can't just lie there in the way to slow it down. Um, so, see number one there has rolled out the way so she can't be penalized. Again, tackle number four, rolls out the way. Fiji, get the ball back. Nice line, saw the gap, which is what we were practicing last night. Not great tackling from England. They normally do a lot better than that, even though Fiji are very good at running the ball. Um, not their best. Hill number Island was out of position there. Yeah. Not great. England had an 84% tackle completion rate in this match, um, which is low for them. They're normally in the 92 to 95 range. And that's why um, Fiji are the first team to score three tries against them in, I think it's two years. So Fiji gets the, so it's half time. I think that's probably enough for this one. Hopefully it's recorded and... Um, I've managed some feedback would be great 